Hello everyone, it's Mahin. So in this video, I'll try to prove this beautiful combinatorial identity. Um, for those of you who don't understand this notation, let me explain this notation a little bit first so that you can understand what this problem is asking. So let's say when you have something like this notation, we read it as n choose k. And what it really means is that let's say if we have n different objects, right? And you have to choose k different objects out of those n different objects. How many different ways can you do it? This is what this notation signifies. All right. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have three different alphabets, right? A, B, and C, right? There are three alphabets. And how many different ways can we choose two alphabets out of those three alphabets? Well, we can either choose A and B, or we can choose b and c or you can choose a and c right so that's it there are only these three different ways can we choose you can choose like uh, two alphabets out of those three alphabets so that means three choose two equals two three all right so this is what this notation signifies if you want to understand it in a deeper way uh, i will recommend you to first you know, gather some knowledge in combinatorics, in particularly in combination, you know, combination permutation, uh, and then come back to this video. If you don't understand this notation properly, you'll have a hard time understanding this uh, this problem later on the proof. All right. So first, let me read the problem for you a little bit. So the problem is asking this identity is asking. Let's we have to prove that two n plus two choose n plus one is equals to two n choose n plus one plus 2 multiplied by 2n choose n plus 2n choose n minus 1. We have to prove that this is equal, right? We have to prove this identity. All right. So when you first see it, maybe some of you can think about, you know, solving the algebraic method. Maybe some of you know this equation. Let's say we have, we have this equation in combinatorics and factorial and then k factorial n minus k factorial. All right. You can try to do it in this way. Now, if you do this, maybe you'll be able you'll be able to solve it. I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to solve it, but you have to do a lots of really ugly, tedious calculation. You know, and on top of that, even if you are even if you succeed to solve this, you will not really able to feel it. Like why it's true. You know, you'll not be able to know why it's true. Why it works. You know, so that's why I will try to solve it in a different way. The method that I will use to solve this problem is called double counting method. All right, it's called double counting method. Double counting method is nothing fancy. It's just that let's say it's a very it's a very effective technique in combinatorics where you try to count something in two different ways and come up with two different expression and then you claim that they are equal because as you are counting the same thing in two different ways obviously it has to be equal right so this is double counting method so what i will do here my goal here is that i will try to count something and then first i will count it in a particular way and i will i will try to show that the number that I will get if I count the number that I will get is equals to 2n plus 2 choose n plus 1 and then I will, I will count the same thing in a different way and then I will get this uh, right hand side of the identity and as we are you know as we are counting the same thing in two different ways we are going to claim that they are equal very simple right but yeah it's very effective in combinatorics so let's try to do it now for the sake of making them making it a bit more fun Let's try to imagine the scenario where in the Hogwarts, maybe some of you know about Harry Potter and the Hogwarts. So let's say in Hogwarts, there is a Quidditch game going on where in the Gryffindor team squad, there are 2n plus 2 players in the squad. But in a game, only n plus 1 player can play. All right. In a particular game, only n plus 1 player can play. All right. So n plus one player can play in a game. Now the question is, how many different ways can we form the team out of this two n plus two player? Well, we can. How many different ways we can choose n plus one player out of this two n plus two player? We can do it. 
2 n plus 2 choose n plus 1 different ways, right? As simple as that. So as, as you can see, we already found the left side of the identity. Now we have we can we have to show that and now we'll count in different way and then we have to show that the same thing is equal to this thing. We have to come up with something so that you know we have to show that this side of the, of the identity counts the same thing. Again, let me remind you what we are counting. We are counting the number of ways we can create the team, right? Create the we can we can choose the team. We can choose n plus one plus out of the squad. So let me count it in a different way. And my goal is to show that the result of the counting will be this like equal to this part. All right. So let's say let's imagine a scenario whether Harry and Ron, whether they will be in the team or not. Based on that, how many different ways can we divide the scenario? How many different cases do we'll have? Well, we have four different cases. Let me write it down here. So, first scenario is that both Harry and Ron, they will be in the team. They will be in the main team. They will not be sitting on the bench and they will play in the main team. This is the first scenario, first case. Second case, case is that neither Harry nor Ron will play in the team. So I'm going to denote it like this. Neither Harry nor Ron will play in the main team. Maybe they are injured, something like that, you know. Third scenario is that Harry will be in the team, but Ron will be not, not in the team. Ron will not be a part of the team. And the last scenario is that Harry will not be in the team, but Ron will be a part of the team. All right. Now let's count each different cases. All right. So the, the first case, when both Harry and Ron, they will be, they will be part of the team. Well, as Harry and Ron both are in the team, we are sure that they will play in the main team. We have to find how many more players to fulfill the team. Well, as we have to find n plus one player, we have to, we need n plus one player in the team, and we already have two players. We already know that Harry and Ron both will play, so we have to choose n minus one more players, and we have to choose this n minus one players out of how many players again in the squad. There were initially two n plus two players, but we know that both Harry and Ron Ron will play in the team. We have to subtract them, so we have. To n remaining player to choose from, so we can choose n minus one player. We have to choose n minus one player out of the remaining two n player to fulfill the team, and we can do it in two n choose n minus different ways. All right. So this is the first case. Well, let's go to the second case where neither Harry nor Ron will play in the team. Probably they are um, they are injured. You know. Maybe there are some kind of injuries so they can play in the in the team. So in that case, as neither Harry nor Ron will play in, will be in the team, we have to still choose n plus one player. But we have to do it out of how many players? As neither Harry nor Ron will play in the team, we have to subtract them from the main main squad. We have two n player in the squad, so we have to choose n plus one player out of the two n remaining player, and we can do it in. 2n choose n plus 1 different ways. All right. Now let's go to the third scenario. All right. The third scenario, we are sure that Harry will play in the team, but Ron will not play in the team. Now, as Harry will already be in the team, how many more players we, we need to choose to create the whole team? Well, we need n plus 1 player in the team, and as Harry is already in the team, we have to subtract one. We need, we need n more player in the team to fulfill the team but we are going to choose this n player out of how many players well initially we have 2n plus 2 player in the squad as we know Harry is already in the team and as you all also know Ron will not play in the team we have to subtract 2 these two possibilities are out of, out, out of the uh, question so I am going to subtract this 2 so it will be 2n so we have to choose this time we have to choose n more player to, to create the team out of the 2n player. So we can do it in 2n choose n different ways. And the final case is the same. In the, the, is the, the situation here is reverse. Here, Harry will not be in the team, but Ron will be in the team. And we can choose, we have to choose n more players because as Ron will be in the team, we have to choose n more player, but we have to choose from 2n more players, 2n, 2n different players out of the squad as we know that 
Harry will not play and Ron is already in the team. So you can also in the final cases we can choose the team, we can create the team in to and choose and different ways. So the total way whether Harry and Ron will be win, whether Harry and Ron will play in the team or not, based on that we can create the team in how many different ways? Well, the total ways of creating the team is 2n uh, choose n minus 1 plus 2n choose n plus 1 plus 2n choose n plus again 2n choose n equals to what it equals to well let me rearrange it I'm going to write this first 2n choose n plus 1 and then there are as there are two of them 2n choose n I can I can write it as 2 multiplied by 2n choose n plus I'm going to write this one here 2n choose n minus 1 so as we counted in this way we got this expression right over here which is exactly same as the right hand side of this identity which means there has to be equal because we counted the same thing what did you count we count when well, we counted how many different ways we create the team out of the 12 plus 2 player how many different ways can you create the team right and but as we counted the same thing in two different ways it has to be equal both has to be equal so this part this part of the identity is exactly equal on the that part of the identity because we counted the same thing in two different ways see now we actually if we can prove if we solve the problem in this way you can actually see why it's true you can exactly know the meaning of each term right you can exactly know what it signifies if we do it in an algebraic way you cannot really know why it's true i mean you can solve it but you will not really feel the satisfaction you will not really it will be a very mechanical calculation, you know, mechanical tedious calculation. But in this case, you know the exact meaning of each terminology, right? It's like they're alive, you know, each term is like alive, it has a meaning, you know. So you can really you know feel it with your soul. Now you tell me, is there anything more beautiful than something that you can feel with your soul? 